If you want to know just how old your favorite tree in New Brunswick is, there's a team here that can help. This is the Dendo Chronology Lab at Mount Allison University in Sackville. My name is Ben Phillips and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Geography and Environment at Mount Allison University and I run the Acadian Forest Dendro Chronology Lab here at the University. Today I'm going to take you through the process of aging and measuring the growth of old growth trees. So tell me what the first step is once you have a tree core sample. So we take these uh, slotted mounting boards, um, we, we take our core, um, we label the boards really well so we don't get anything mixed up, and then sometimes the tree core gets twisted so we want to make sure the cells are all orientated upwards so that we can see them, the rings clearly under the microscope. Uh, we put a, a, a path of glue down here, um, put the core in, and then we get all four of them in here, and then we put a series of elastics around them to hold them down, and then we have to wait for 24 hours as we let it dry. So the next step is uh, surfacing the actual cores so we get a nice, smooth, polished surface that we can look at the tree rings under the microscope. Put under the microscope, and at that point um, we get it situated, um, and I measure each tree ring to a thousandth of a millimeter, so to the micrometer level. So we're, we're measuring these things very accurately, um, and we're looking at the tree rings basically at the cellular level um, to make sure we don't miss any. Trees in the springtime start to grow early wood cells that transport sap, and then as we move into the fall, they start to harden off, they lignify their cells, and they get ready for winter, and they start to grow late wood which is a dark line basically, um, and they do this every year annually, laying down this series of annual tree rings that lets us uh, know exactly how old the tree is. So what's the verdict? How old is the tree? I brought these in and um, measured them all, and the oldest one um, was actually counted to 383, and uh, now that I've measured it, it turns out there was five, five more rings, so it's 388 years. And the tree, of course, takes a few years to grow up to sampling height. So this tree, I can confidently say, is over 400 years old. So what does the old growth that you're analyzing in a lab look like out in nature? So most New Brunswickers don't know what old growth looks like. We live in communities. We see trees like this young tree here. Uh, most of the forest that we look, we look at every day has been cut multiple times through its history. And we have young trees everywhere. So that's what we recognize as trees. An old growth tree usually is pretty gnarly looking, so we don't know what old growth looks like, so it's easy to miss. For me, I get a lot of data out of it. I can look back through the history of these trees and see back hundreds and hundreds of years and ecologically what happened and what maybe changed with the weather and the climate. Um, but those trees also provide important habitat. You've got species that might only live in old growth trees, and some of those species, we probably don't even know what they are at this point. Um, because we have no old growth left to study. So these little tiny pockets of old growth we have um, are very important because they're our only kind of data set or sample location that's, that's left of the original forest. Mm -hmm.